Alright, good morning, this is Carleboy, and I'm here to show you the development progress of the Hashtopus, which is basically distributed computing wrapper around Hashcat, which I believe you're all familiar with. So let's get started. First, you need to set up uh, the web server. So here I have um, I have a domain I've created, so I'll just copy the web files. So this is an empty directory, empty directory as well, and um, and a couple of images, then the seven zip uh, binaries. So we so we'll be sure that uh, we can unpack the the hashcat archives on any system. Then the administrator, server, and uh, the database config, and also the agent exe, which is uh, binary compatible with uh, Linux on, on Mono. So it can run on Windows or, or Linux. It's compatible with .NET 2.0, so it should be handled by older systems like Windows XP as well. So let's just copy it. Okay, and then we need to create a database structure. So that's what this file is for. So what I have here is a empty database with uh, empty. Uh, well, basically everything. So I'm just going to import the file which I've exported and which is going to be just going to be part of the installation. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is okay. I probably guess. Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay, there's the database structure. I believe it is all right. Yeah, default values are fine. Config is empty, it's right. All right, so I believe you can close this or maybe I'll leave this open for a further showing. And I'm gonna open the domain. Oh. <coughs> okay, first time login, you can enter any password you want. It's gonna let you in. And then in the settings, server configuration, yeah, you can just set, so let's set, for example, hash to push set. Now I'm gonna log out, and with some random password, it's not going to let me in. Alright, so, few menu items, most of them empty. So, I'm going to start agent deployer, which will download the exe for me. There we go. And I'm going to copy it into this empty directory. And just execute it. Hello, the firewall. Yeah, there we go. So if I now click into the administration, I can see the agent registered right there. I know it's operating system, architecture, GPU brand, I actually see every every GPU the system has along with the driver because it has automatically detected by the string NVIDIA that it's running NVIDIA platform. So it detected the driver version as well. Now you can see this system has no hashcat installed because obviously we haven't defined our releases. I'll get to that later. And the last activity down is codename for download, which means that this agent tried from this IP download at this exact time the hashcat and it failed because you know you don't have any releases so let's define one <clears throat> so to the define releases i'm going to uh use the ones i have in my in my actual actual um show environment so i'm just going to copy this right there so there is a url for nvidia as well as for AMD. So everything is doubled, right? Because you need to have different archives. Yeah, then the root directory is like this. And there is OCL. Now these are the files that will be extracted from the archive. So common files are going for both 32 and 64 bits and NVIDIA and AMD. Those are just these two files. You can notice the the key file because um, I already have the key files uh, inputted in the 7-zip archives in its beta, but obviously that won't be needed in the full version. OK, 
Okay, now this goes here, and also 64, and for the MD it's both the same. Then minimum required driver, I believe it's this one. You can see that it's without the dot, there will be dot, but uh, you just skip it. It acts like a number, and it is very important. And AMD. Um, there is a problem on, on Linux where the AMD Catalyst version can be detected properly, which means that uh, you can either create file hashtopus dot uh, AMD, I guess, I, I'll have it, leave it in the comments, and you enter just, uh, just the number of the version you have installed, and if you don't do that, the hashtopus will act like the version is 9999, so it will always act like it's the newest version. So if you don't define this file, you better have the most current driver there is to have. Okay, so now I'm going to create a release. Damn, the version. All right, it's uh, 120B25. Ah, there we go, it was created. Now I can see it um, here, which means that, yeah, it's already downloading. So this is going to take a while because I'm connected through Wi-Fi, but nevertheless, um, actually every time anything fails here, it's going to wait 30 seconds and then retry from the start. The order of commands is, first, login into the server or register if I don't have the security token yet, which is represented by this file. Then if I'm logged into the server, I'm going to ask the server which platform do I have? Because uh, sometimes you have um, you have two GPUs and one is NVIDIA, one is AMD. So obviously you want to leave this to the administrator to decide, which is why this combo box is right there and you can just do set. And if I was to set this to AMD, the next time it wouldn't download the CUDA hashcat but the OCL hashcat. Okay, now it's extracting based on the rules we've defined here. It's also going to take a while. Yeah, so so back to this uh, back to the connection schema. So after logging in and uh, detecting the driver, it's going to try to self self update this this exe, which is basically done by calling this where link. Yeah, the agent, the player. <clears throat> and if we actually look into this exe right at the end, we can see that there's the there's the server URL attached to it. Uh, so when the when the agent exe is started, it's going to read its own end. And if it finds the URL here, it's going to use it. Otherwise, it's just going to end with an error stating that uh, the agent wasn't properly deployed. Okay, almost there. So many hash types right there. Good work, Atom, by the way. Just a couple more minutes. All right. So it extracted everything, it created uh, the EULA file because obviously we don't want the user to have to manually accept the, the license. And then it says the task assignment failed because there is no task I either am or could be assigned to. Now if I look into here, I can see that simply there are no tasks. But uh, prior to creating tasks, we need to create a hash list. So let's do that. Uh, hashes can be of two formats. Either it's an ordinary text file with uh, hashes and uh, optional salts on each line, or it can be at HCSAP, uh, which is for a WPA and WPA2, basically virus network cracking. So um, we better obtain some hashes. I'm just going to Google some, for example, MD5 example hashes. I don't know. I have plenty of word lists, but I don't feel like sharing them here. Okay, so I'm back here with uh, some hashes for you. So let's create a new hash list, right? Let's call it, for example, example MD5. I'm going to select uh, the MD5 file list. Uh, the format is text file, obviously. We can look into that file right there. And um, yeah, we see just 25 MD5 hashes. And we can see if we select this new line that it's two bytes, which means it's Windows file format, so it's slash r slash n. So it's created, right? It's first is trying to load data command from MySQL, which uh, usually speeds up uh, large text files loading, but obviously it's failed before. 
So it just tried to insert uh, them one by one inside a transaction. So it's it's slower, but it's not that far, not, not that slow too. Okay, so we can see the hash list right there. So 25 hashes, 0% correct. It's pretty straightforward. No tasks cracking this hash list. No agents contributed to this hash list whatsoever. In the show results, we can see all of them. If I just select correct, obviously this is empty because no hashes are correct right now. Let's create a new task. Uh, let's call it example task. It's a straightforward mask attack with hash type MD5. Then here comes the hash list and the mask. Chunk size of 300 seconds, which means that uh, every piece of work that will be dispatched to an agent will try to balance to exactly 300 seconds, which is done by first benchmarking the agent. Of course, it's now in an endless loop with desire to acquire some work. And obviously, we are going to select this hash list. Right, it's right there, create it. <clears throat> and now its priority is set to zero, which means that um, the agent will not be automatically assigned to it. Now, if I was to set this priority to one uh, or anything higher than zero, uh, the next time the agent would try to acquire some work and uh, find himself not assigned to anything, it will automatically assign to the task which is incomplete with this with the highest priority. So that's how it works. So <clears throat> if you want sort of manual mode, just leave the priority to zero with all your tasks and assign the agents manually, which is what I'm going to do now. But here I see the agents and uh, this little field here is the aggressivity uh, the aggressivity is a pretty pretty good number um, it only works on Windows systems but nevertheless it's uh, useful because um, the aggressivity says how many seconds does the client machine have to be inactive for the cracking to start so it sort of acts like a screensaver mm -hmm. so it is also seen here um, unassigned and the aggressivity is empty of course so I can assign to the example task with aggressivity of 10 which means it'll wait 10 seconds for the user inactivity before it starts cracking uh, if I was to set minus 1 it is actually a special state which means uh, the agent activity is paused so the agent can be assigned to a task but its activity is paused uh, this special status can be entered, entered manually of course but um, if at any time during the cracking or even benchmarking the task, uh, an agent sends error like uh, ordinary hashcat std error output, it'll be put into pause state. So right now we can do, for example, 10 or oh, let's make it five, not to have you wait so long. Okay, so I meant okay. Now if I click tasks, I can clearly see that I'm assigned to a task with aggressivity of five and these, these values are empty. Now obviously we're just going to wait 30 seconds before it, uh, it realizes that uh, it's been assigned to something and it'll acquire the job. If I was to look into agents right now, yeah, this is the unpacked hashcat, 7-zip, nothing more there. Okay, now it created a couple more of them. Hash lists, where there is the downloaded hash list. Nothing interesting there. And now it's waiting for me to become inactive for five seconds. So let's wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now the server has first asked me to calculate the, the key space size for him and then uh, to benchmark. Now I've gone, if I'm going to refresh this, I can see that the agent was benchmarked and uh, I can already see a chunk was dispatched to him. Okay. And here we are actually cracking, cracking the passwords right now. I'm just going to refresh this so you can see it. The chunk now took 26 seconds. There was one hash cracked right away by this agent. Of course, everything is clickable, so you can just click between tasks and agents. Uh, we can see the progress in the current chunk. There we see the progress of all key space actually. And um, yeah, you might notice that this doesn't change because um, 
this gets increased every time a chunk is dispatched and it is increased by the length of each chunk so right now these numbers are equal because we only have dispatched one chunk and this is the prog progress inside that chunk okay so so already two hashes correct there we go and uh, if there was any other agent cracking against this task then uh, we would see the zaps because uh, there are two numbers um, the letter is how many zaps were received and the first one is how many of them were actually applied because these numbers should be equal at all time and if they are not please report a bug to me okay and now we click into this hash list and we can show the results yeah we can already see that there are these two hashes cracked let's just see the plain text yeah this person wrote. there is some global chunk activity <coughs> uh, which is showing the last dispatched uh, 100 chunks for all tasks and all agents so it's sort of summary you can see the correct number two um uh, but of course the tasks do not uh, are not limited to just mask attack yeah so i'm going to show you how to use um, word lists and the rule sets so i'm going to upload the global file section mm. Yeah, I'm going to borrow something from the from the OCL hashcat. Uh, edicts. So let's let's make it for example example.txt. Whoa, that was pretty big file, but never mind. Yeah, actually, I could have uploaded two at a time. Never realized. So let's make it for example generated.rule upload files. It's right there and then I'm going to create a new task it's uh, for example example word list some again oh no no it's it's a direct attack hash type zero against this hash list and now I'm going to add this word list and this rule set right maybe the double space and uh, yeah I'm going to do this too 305 uh, minutes it's pretty good time for a chunk you can actually see we are pretty fastly approaching the end of the chunk but of course I'm cracking on NVIDIA GT 520 M so it's just a laptop and it's not not too fast so there I've just created another task you can see they're both there this one uh, doesn't even have known key space size yet because that's the first assigned agent's job to calculate it. Um, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to increase the priority here to one and uh, unassign the first agent from the current task. Okay, so obviously it'll finish the current chunk because it will be just wasted effort. Um, so yeah actually I'm just going to close it because uh, I don't want to have you wait too long and I'm going to start it again yeah. obviously there is something wrong because it wasn't assigned at all because I'm going to assign it manually Yeah, now it's downloading the files, so the word list, the rule set, it uh, calculated the key space, now it's benchmarking, 10 seconds. And there we go, first chunk started. Oh, we can already see the task was completed. Is it really? Oh, no, 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 that is the, yeah because the, the 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 work was dispatched in just one chunk but the chunk itself is not complete yet so as we can see yeah, it's a 61 second 61 percent 72 percent it's going very fast it's just very small wordless and just one rule set but it's already correct 12 hashes 
Okay, and then it's done. No more assignment. So there we go. Just one hash list. I already correct 14 passwords out of 25. You can check them right there. Obviously, I've selected some some part of BA starting hashes, but never mind. Should be a good demonstration anyway. Yeah, so I believe that's all. Um, under under Linux, of course, you are going to run this under Mono Runtime, uh, compatible with uh, the .NET 2. And uh, uh, also, this this administrator is written so that it is uh, very compatible. Okay, so there's just a few JavaScripts, uh, virtually no styles, so it's going to work on mobile phones, tablet, basically anything you throw at it. Mm, all right, I believe that is all. Uh, I would be glad if you could help me testing this because obviously like we saw before with the priority assignment There are still some bugs left mostly server-side though Okay, so goodbye